thank you very much uh, for uh, being with us today. Could you tell us your name and your role within uh, Start Network, please? Hi, I'm Anna Marie Bison, and I'm the Start for One coordinator in the Philippines. I'm hosted by CARE. Hi, I'm Amjad, and I'm uh, from Pakistan. I'm placed in WHH Pakistan, who is the host organization for all the Start Network activities in Pakistan. Uh, my name is Sachin Ryan. I'm working as the country manager for Start from Bangladesh. Thank you for your uh, for your introduction. Could you tell us why NGOs in your country decided to work on developing their own risk financing system? Well, the Philippines is among the most disaster-prone countries in the world. Most of our um, NGO uh, members and partners point to the fact that the availability of standby fund has always been a challenge. We have an inadequate uh, amount of fund to meet uh, the needs every time there's a disaster happening. And of course, the timing of releases, uh, whether it is access to their regular donors. Uh, we don't have an in-country fund that actually supports this. And um, there is also no predictability in terms of a mechanism to trigger action. Thank you very much, Anna. Uh, Amjad? Initially, we came up with a drought financing facility developed by the START Network. We worked a lot with the government of Pakistan, and eventually that uh, drought financing facility uh, over three years from 2017 to 2020, it transformed into a full-fledged disaster financing program. And you would be glad to hear that we already staged two anticipatory response in 2020, and they were categorized as very successful. We initiated the first risk financing uh, response in Pakistan, and that was picked up by UN DRR to do a research study and present it to the world and tell how efficacious and how efficient responding before a disaster could threaten the communities is then a knee-jerk reaction, a reactive response. Sajid, so we'll move to you uh, if you allow us. So members in Bangladesh uh, realize that those start is one of the fastest response mechanism, but some of the disasters could be predicted and responded earlier. Members also realized that uh, science and data has uh, improved a lot during the last uh, 10, 20 years. So how we can take advantage of the science and data to predict early, to anticipate the impact of uh, looming disaster, and also to take early actions so that we can reduce the loss and damages. So there is a voice that's getting stronger among NGOs that we need to shift from the traditional way of disaster management and we need to change our mindset. And they really feel that the, the disaster risk financing tools and, 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 and the way of doing things in a different manner would really help us uh, to make this, uh, that shift in our work and, and mindsets. Thank you, Sajid. Could you tell us in Bangladesh, opportunities, challenges uh, for risk financing system for really uh, putting in place strong uh, and durable risk financing system. We need to start with, for example, analysis and then have discussions at the community level in order to understand what could be the potential impact and what kind of actions need to be taken if we have financing uh, going to the community at an early stage and then how it will be reducing the impact or reducing the loss and damages. So that will be creating more space to work with the community to have them more engaged in the designing of the, of the interventions. And the second thing is that, I mean, as I was talking about the government, so the NGOs working together side by side with the local government, and there is a very strong coordination that's happening from an earlier stage. In an emergency, sometimes it's difficult to kind of initiate that coordination. So disaster risk financing will give us a broader scope and space so that organizations, local government, communities come together, have better coordination, communication. Thank you very much, uh, Sajid. Amjad, could you tell us? Uh, during the last year, the first challenge we came across was not just a challenge which is found in Pakistan, it is a global challenge. It's the reactive mindset of the humanitarian community. The response uh, as a knee-jerk reaction to which we are so geared into 
that the organizations are tuned into responding to something which has happened. Persuading them to come and respond to something which is likely to happen is really a challenge. So the second challenge we faced is uh, accessibility to flexible and easy funding mechanism because the window of operation is sometimes so short before a disaster could strike that uh, the funding has to be pre-positioned and ensured to the local organizations. The third aspect we have to keep in mind is that anticipatory response, risk financing is something we are not responding to a damage need assessment, which has been conducted. We have to work out, we have to think what could happen. And if this happens, what is the best possible response? So for that, we have to look towards the communities who are at the forefront of the disasters. Anything which is not appropriate, anything which is not acceptable or maybe not liked by the communities is not going to work here. Thank you very much, uh, Amjad. Anna, could you tell us what are the key opportunities and challenges in Philippines? Looking at opportunities, um, NGOs and civil society actors uh, are already recognized as essential actors in designing and delivering uh, disaster risk management and humanitarian responses. We are particularly important in the last mile delivery and in reaching the most excluded communities. As such, we offer significant knowledge and valuable perspective that could be better integrated into our disaster risk finance work. There are already local initiatives to work, for example, with the UN agencies in the activation of uh, Pilot Sur for, for Typhoon. Uh, everything is at the, on the discussion table right now, whether the different building blocks will be built by them or us. And we don't have to be the original. We just have to bolt in together the different elements of DRF. And that's coordination, that's collaboration at the local level, and also at the global level. Um, the DRF project in the Philippines only started in January, so we are still taking uh, small steps, but we are already um, taking on big hurdles by trying to uh, plug in to the existing uh, dynamic work at developing models, uh, doing uh, our own network mapping, uh, so that we can all agree on uh, where we can act. Start network and the and uh, our team in the crisis anticipation and risk finance can provide all that you know, technical knowledge and technical services. Uh, and that's an opportunity that countries like the Philippines, like Pakistan, like Bangladesh can maximize if we have also the funding support through a DRF mechanism.